At the centre of pretty much every galaxy, there is a supermassive black hole, which has more mass than a billion of our suns combined. These supermassive black holes are believed to be the seeds to which the galaxies formed around. And we can see evidence for these supermassive black holes in images like this one taken by the Event Horizon Telescope, and through their influence on the neighbourhood by spotting things called quasar or quasi-stellar radio objects. These quasars are powered by material falling into the black hole at the centre of a galaxy, and they're extraordinarily bright. We can see them at incredible distances away from us. In fact, the furthest we've seen one is so incredibly far away that the universe was only 700 million years old when the light left that quasar. Now this is amazing, but it's also a problem because we don't actually know how a supermassive black hole, that is a black hole with a billion times the mass of our sun, would actually form in the space of 700 million years. So we have a problem in astronomy. Now, you can think of different ways that you might make a black hole. A usual way would be to say have a big star, and that star blows up, and the remains of this star would perhaps be a black hole. Then over the course of millions of years, this remaining black hole would eat material around it and become bigger and bigger, eventually becoming a supermassive black hole. But the problem there is that if you do the calculations and the simulations like astronomers across the world have done, you actually find that this black hole can't grow fast enough to become a supermassive black hole. And this is in part due to the influence of all of the material rushing away from the star as it blows up in a supernova. So we need another idea to explain how we can make supermassive black holes. And there's one really cool idea which isn't confirmed yet, but I certainly hope it is because it's just so fascinating. The idea is that you have in this early universe a lot of gas and dust sitting around and it starts to clump and pile on to a central place. And we're talking tens of thousands of times the mass of our sun in terms of material. And this object clumps and clumps together, and through gravitational instabilities, this ball starts breaking apart and feeding onto a central object. And this central object becomes what's known as a protostar, but one that is far larger than our sun. In fact, its radius could be on the order of a thousand times the size of our sun's radius. And over time, this protostar would have some nuclear fusion happening at its center, so acting like a normal star would. And this nuclear fusion will release energy that will push against the gravity of all the other stuff trying to pull in towards the center. But in this special case, we have so much material piling on to the star, eventually, nuclear fusion just isn't enough to support it anymore. So you have this potential for the core of the star to actually collapse into a black hole. But the really cool thing is that the surrounding material doesn't immediately fall in afterwards. What you have happen is that the black hole forms and around the black hole a disk of material that is accreting onto the black hole forms. And as we know from our observations from the Event Horizon Telescope and our simulations, material accreting onto a black hole emits a lot of light. The black hole itself doesn't emit light, but all of this material falling on does emit light. And all of this light being emitted by the accreting material actually pushes against the other material all around this black hole that used to be part of the star. So this star is still trying to fall inwards, but now it's being pushed out by the material that is actually falling into the black hole. So what ends up happening is something rather cool. This black hole is actually supporting an entire enormous star's worth of material, and what we call hydrostatic equilibrium. So you can imagine it that the nuclear fusion at the center of the star has now been replaced with light shining out from the accretion disk of this black hole. And this object where a black hole sits at the center of the star 
is called a quasi-star. Now we haven't seen a quasi-star yet because they would only exist in the very early stages of the universe, and we haven't been able to probe those parts of the universe well enough to either rule them in or out. But the cool thing with these quasi-stars is that all of this material surrounding the black hole actually acts to feed material into the black hole faster than it would otherwise. So what ends up happening is that the black hole actually grows in mass incredibly quickly. Over the course of just a few million years, its mass can reach a thousand or more times the mass of our sun. And that's really important because by the time that the hydrostatic equilibrium breaks down and the quasi-star kind of evaporates, what you're left with is a supermassive black hole seed, which is a thousand times the mass of our sun and can easily grow to be a billion times the mass of our sun by the time that we see the first quasars in the universe. So it can be a billion times the mass of our sun in just 700 million years. Now this is really interesting and really cool, I think, because it goes to show that the fundamental physics of what keeps a star up isn't necessarily nuclear fusion, it's just that there's some energy source pushing out from within. You can replace that with anything you want. In the case of a quasi-star, the black hole in the accretion disk supplies some gravitationally uh, obtained energy to push against the star's surface. But like I say, we haven't actually found definitive evidence that these quasi-stars existed in our universe. We need a lot more research to go into this, and a lot more observations of the early phases of the universe. It's important to remember here that we're talking about only the first few hundreds of millions of years of our universe. And to see that far back requires techniques and instruments that are incredibly precise and sensitive. So this perhaps will be a question that we can answer in the future, and I would certainly love to see that quasi-stars did exist in the universe, because they seem like such fascinating objects. But that's it for this video, I hope you enjoyed it, if you did, please like and subscribe. And if you want to talk about quasi-stars or anything else science or astronomy related, please leave your comments in the comments section below. But for now, thanks for watching.